Okay, so part two. Let's do this nonlinear part. I had shrunk this down just to add some stuff and uh, off of the recording. And that is now we're supposed to look at the, basically the same problem, but the, uh, we're supposed to consider air resistance. And the drag force is given by this equation here. So essentially the drag force points in the opposite direction of the velocity vector and it has a magnitude of c times the, the velocity of the, the square of the velocity's magnitude where c is 0 0.001. So the equations of motion are basically this, very similar to above. Um, the first derivative of x with respect to time is the velocity in the x direction. But now our force changes here. So this is our mass times acceleration. So mass times uh, dv sub x dt. And that is equal to the uh, drag force that points in the x direction. So it's minus c times vx times the uh, magnitude of vx. Likewise, uh, the velocity in the y direction is just given by this. That's same as above. Uh, but the force in the y direction now um, is equal to gravity. And then you also have this term that uh, takes into consideration the drag. So now we have four nonlinear differential equations that are coupled together and we have to solve. So let us um, now write the, um, let's just write the function that's going to return these derivatives. And we can actually recycle the events function uh, from above, so we're not going to bother doing that again. But we're going to define a function, and this time we're going to call it drag, and it's going to take, um, take in an argument t for time. Capital X is going to be the vector of uh, uh, positions and velocities. Like before, we are going to just initialize this as mp dot zeros for components. And before I forget, because I like to write more MATLAB than um, Python, uh, explicitly return the uh, the vector of derivatives. Oops, this should be um, x prime, and this should be x prime. And unlike above, we are going to actually need the mass this time because it's not going to drop out. And we had set that to 145 grams, and we're going to enter in this constant as 0 0.001. So now we're ready to begin. So the velocity in the x direction, um, that's going to be x, x1. So x prime 0, the first component of that is going to be equal to x1. Okay, um, maybe to make this code cleaner, what I think I'm going to actually do is come here and I'm going to have f sub x, that's the drag force in the x direction, that's going to be equal to minus c times the velocity, which is x1, times np dot abs x1. Uh, does that look good? So far so good. And let's do the same thing for y. So the force in the y direction due to the drag is minus c. The velocity in the x direction, or y direction, excuse me, is x3. Um, and we need to multiply that times mp dot abs x3. That way when we come down here and we write the next one, so our acceleration in the x direction, x prime 1, that is going to be equal to the force in the x direction, f sub x, and we need to divide through by the mass m. Okay, now we need to do x prime 2. That's the velocity in the y direction, and I have an extra bracket. Um, where is this coming from? Oh, there it is. This should be a p. x prime 2. Um, that is the velocity in the y direction, so that should be equal to x3 and x prime 3 is equal to minus mg 9.8 and I'm going to divide through by the mass now so that m is going to cancel out and then we need to add in the force in the y direction divided by the mass. So that should be it. Uh, let me just get rid of this extra space here and run it to see if there are any typos. Nothing obvious. So um, let's move on now and calcu calculate the uh, trajectory just as we did above. Um, because there's friction involved, I expect this to take uh, not as quite not quite as long as before. So I'm going to set um, well. Our velocity v sub zero is going to be the same. That's 45. Our um, 
final time, I'm just going to set to 5 again. And our um, T span then is going to be equal to 0, comma, TF. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Go away. Parenthesis. Good. T eval is going to be equal to lin space. Uh, I'm going to need an NP there, aren't I? Um, lin space. And this has to be a lowercase t. And this has to be NP dot lin space. So T span 0. T span 1. And I'm just going to put a thousand points in to start. Uh, syntax error. Where is my syntax error? Um, but, but I have an extra parenthesis here. Okay, let us set theta is equal to 30 degrees, and we're just going to do theta is equal to np dot radians uh, theta. And now let's construct our uh, initial uh, initial condition vector. And this is the same as before, so I'm just going to copy and paste from above. And now we can construct our solution. Solution is equal to solve IVP. Our function is called drag. Uh, we need our T span, our X zero. Uh, let's set our T eval equals T eval. And events equals events. Does this run? Syntax, uh, and what does it say here? V0 not defined. Did I use a capital V up here? I think I did. V0. Drag is not defined. What did I call it up here? Oh, grad. Let's spell it correctly. Drag. Boom. Boom. Oh, what's going on now? X. Is there a typo there? Yes. X prime. Run, run. There we go. Let's print out the solution and make sure we're uh, actually getting something here. Print sol. Looks good. Success equals true. Let's see if there are any events here. Uh, cursor dot t events. So yeah, we're hitting the ground 4.3 seconds. Let us now uh, just plot this out and uh, see what it looks like. So I'm going to get rid of the print statement. And I'm going to do x is equal to solution dot y. Zero th um, row is the x values, all columns. Uh, and likewise y is solution dot y. Column 2, I'm sorry, row 2 all columns plt dot uh, plt dot plot x comma y comma and let's just make these dots again run so yeah we have something that's not quite parabolic and we can play around with this a bit and just let's just fool around with this um, drag coefficient here and cut it down by an order of magnitude and see what happens so we get a much uh, steeper drop off here. Let's even go up another order of magnitude. Uh, where, 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 where? Here, run, run. So we keep getting steeper and steeper and you notice that this does not go very far. In this case, it only travels a total of uh, five, and, five meters and change, a little under six. So let's go back and change it back to its uh, default. Zero, zero, run, run. So we're getting a range approximately 100 and I don't know what that looks like, 110, 110-ish. Okay, so let's remove this for now. And we need to create a function that's going to return the range. So what I'm going to do is be lazy and borrow the function we wrote up here. Uh, where is it? Yes, this is a calculate range, no drag, and we're just going to... Uh, we appropriate it, copy, uh, to do the case where we have a drag. So here, paste, and let's just name it 
drag. Um, let's see now. Now this function here becomes drag. Um, hmm, that should do it. So let us um, just test it out here. Let's run that. Um, let's go down here and do print calculate range drag theta. Oh, what's going on? Oh, oh, it's the tuple issue. Let us do this then. 30 comma run. Okay, 111. That looks good. It kind of agrees with our uh, previous um, estimate from the plot. So now let us just, um, we're not going to need this. We're now going to have to write the optimization function. Uh, basically, that just returns the negative of that. So let's uh, just copy and paste again. So let's just do another copy paste thing. Uh, where's our object objective function? Here it is. We will copy. Paste, and let's just call it objective drag instead. Let's run that. Okay, now we're actually ready to do the optimi optimization. So let's go back up here uh, and be very lazy again and find where we did our optimization. Oh, where, 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 where? Symbols. Here it is. Um, so let's just grab this, copy, let's go down here, paste, um, and now we need to change this to objective, drag. Uh, let's see if this runs. Cool. Uh, uh, ba -ba -ba. Actually, that looks like it's too steep of an angle. I expected it to be a little shallower. Um, did I change? Oh, this has to be drag up here. Well, that's the danger of copying and pasting. 41.2, that's about uh, what I expected it to be. So a little bit of a shallower angle than before, um, but that's probably because of the nonlinearities. So yeah, that's all there is uh, to it. Uh, I was a bit cavalier about the uh, the fact that the uh, the range changes slightly as a function of these variables, like the number of data points and the time. Uh, likewise, with the um, with the optimization algorithm, um, giving slightly different results for different uh, different entries. But uh, this video has gone on way too long, and in the future I'll come back to it and address it because that can be that can be a problem. Uh, especially in the nonlinear cases where you don't have a way to actually to as easily find find answers like with the linear problem we were able to calculate an exact solution uh, but that's for a future video cool uh, I wanted to do a uh, problem that was a little more involved than just a, a simple physics problem and um, this obviously combined differential equations and optimization uh, the reason I wanted to do that is because I've received a couple questions on uh, machine learning uh, techniques. And a lot of machine learning boils down to optimization problems. Uh, for example, even complicated things like neural networks and deep learning nowadays amount to uh, optimizing a very complicated objective function. Um, so you would train your neural, you would run your, your training data through your neural network and you would adjust the parameters such that the error of the total uh, system compared to the training data is minimized. So in the future we might do something uh, involving more direct uh, machine learning like neural networks or other techniques. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I will go back to finance for the next video and do uh, probability of making 50% on more complicated option spreads. In the past we did just a simple call or put. Uh, we might uh, do a couple contracts, uh, different types of spreads like a call spread or a strangle or something like that. So until next time, see ya.